evil creature of the night, killer of mouse and other vermins. Ha! I got you! Ha ha! You can't flee away from me! You can't! <laughs> Hello, today I'm going to explain you how you can do local debugging with Slooper. What we're going to do is we're going to compile our Arduino program as if it is a Windows program because I'm using Windows here, but otherwise it's a Linux and a Mac, pro Mac program. And then we will debug as if it's just a standard uh, C++ program running on your uh, local machine. To do so, we need the three things. We need Slubber, which is the, uh, actually CDT and our Arduino environment on top of it. We also need a compiler and uh, a debugger. These, this is actually on your system if you have a Linux or a Mac. Windows people need to install this as well. And then we also need a local platform, which I have here made a unit test folder and it contains three files. This is the download from the server, the nightly. This is uh, an installation program I downloaded from uh, MinGW, which is actually the GCC compiler. This is Windows only. And uh, there is a command file, which is actually also Windows only for now. Let's install MinGW. So MinGW uh, is 4 you go to, to, it's also in 32 bits. So you go to MinGW, then you click on Search Forge, and then it will start to download. And what it downloads is this program here. So if we start that one, it'll ask to install stuff. Yep, so we do that. And I just accept the defaults. And I'm, we're going to use the folder here. So everything is in the same folder. So. So that one's installing. Now it's downloading. I'll explain about this slubic.cmd program. So there are some problems with uh, the command line in Windows. And when you compile your program in Slubic, he no longer, from version 4.1 onwards, he no longer takes your path which you have on your system. It actually puts the path completely by itself. Because the MinGW is not uh, in your path because of that, you cannot add it to the path, so you need to provide it a different way. So I've foreseen an environment variable, which is called Sluber Path Extensions. So if by setting this variable, this, is, this variable is actually added to the path. So you can see here now, that this folder here is still empty because it's still extracting, but this folder we put in here. And because of setting this environment variable, the builder will fight the program. A program compiled with MinGW uh, needs libraries, the uh, TLLs in, on Windows, and the, so they then it needs to be added to the path. Now the path used to debug changed by Sluber. So basically by adding this one here to the path, it will both compile and debug. The meantime, the program is installing here. Installation of MinGW is done. See here now in this path, the GCC, G++ is there, and also some DLLs which are needed to run the executable. So go back here. We will 
uh, install Sluber, which on Windows means extract here with 7-zip. And we do 7-zip extract here. So in Windows people don't forget to copy this file and paste it in your Sluber folder and start Sluber this way. This is not needed for the other people. They can just directly start this one, but on Windows you better start it this way. So now we start Sluber and Sluber will install a whole bunch of things. So we're also going to set this to Sluber is installed, GCC and GDB are installed now. Now we will install the local platform. How do we do that? We go to GitHub. GitHub, uh, in GitHub, you, we go to So we go to github.com Yank Hardware. I can clone from here. I advise you to fork this library and after you fork the library to clone, to select clone and download and copy clump clipboard from here. Back to Sluber. In Sluber we do file import uh, git projects from git next clone uri next uh, paste yep that's the correct one you will have to provide your username and password in my case he already knows those we want to master and we also will put this under unit test. Okay. And that's finished. So you can see here that there is a couple of uh, hardware platforms here. So we need to tell Sluber that what we actually just taken from GitHub are actually uh, hardware platforms. So this PC, C, unit test, okay. So we added these to the private hardware path. And we select OK. Everything is now set up to do local debugging. But it's just make a new project and we'll do blink. And we use the Arduino AVR. We just use an UNO. UNO here. We'll go for the example. Examples. Digital. Blink without delay because that's far better code than Blink. Finish. So we have Blink without delay and we can compile Blink without delay. If I had a unit, you know, I could also upload code. 
the code will give errors, but if that's the D. Uh, include Arduino.h. Okay. So this compiles, this compiles fine, but we cannot debug this locally. So what we do. We go to the project properties and we go to Arduino and we do manage configurations, we create a new and we call it local debug and it's based on release. Okay. Okay. So now we go to local debug here. And we actually tell it that local debug is now AVR local. We again go for the UNO. And we actually say we're going to do debugging. And now we created a a new project kind of like a new configuration and we're going to switch to that configuration set active local debug so we can compile so that compiles and now you have a windows program because i'm on a windows system and we can debug that Windows program. We do debug as, debug configurations, we do a CC++ application, we click here. We actually say that has to be the local debug otherwise it's kind of like useless so here it's local debug plus dot exe local debug with small d okay now we can click the debug he's asking me to open in the debug perspective i tell him to remember that so he doesn't doesn't ask me each time and here we are in our Arduino program, but actually running on the PC. Most of the Arduino commands are faked. They're not really doing anything, uh, but that's because uh, I think you want to debug your code and not the Arduino code. And you want to do that without having to change your code between the two. We didn't change anything of the code. The AVR local made it possible to combine our sketch just as is. So let's say put a breakpoint here and a breakpoint here. Yeah, so I press F8 now, which is basically continue here. This is F8, resume. So now we are in pin mode and we see that the LED pin we're trying to set is 13 and output is 1. So if we step in 2, which is 5 and is here, step in 2, pin mode, you see basically nothing is done here. So here, for instance, uh, the melees, oh, it didn't, if you go to the melees implementation, you see that what I do each time you call melees, you get a number just one higher so now milis should be one yeah, so the current milis is one and the previous milis is zero so it asks whether current is one minus zero is bigger than interval which is 1000 so that should not be the case so we go 
a step further, we step over it. So what we do now is put a breakpoint here as well. So if we go back the next time, current milli should be 2 and uh, previous milli should still be 0. So previous milli is still 0, current milli is 2. So that was fine, works. So if we continue now, oops, I didn't remove the breakpoint. Come on. Now current milis is 1000. We see here that previous milis is increased. So we can actually step to the code and we can check what, uh, what he's doing. That's how you can step to the program and see how things are going. For instance, the next time we come here, we see previous milis is 1000 and current milis is 2000. So, and now he's going to go and let state is now zero, yeah? And we come back here, uh, previous minutes, so yeah. So, and now let state is one. So, that's how you can debug your Arduino sketches on your local machine without having uh, to change your code. Of course, there is no Arduino, the hardware is not present, you cannot test the hardware, uh, you can only test your personal code and see whether your code is doing what you expect to do. So it's interesting to group your code and to go from there. But that'll be for the next video about uh, unit testing your code. Thank you. Hope this was interesting.